Welcome back to another Idaho Falls market update. I'm Cody Wolschlegel, a realtor here in Idaho Falls. So if you've never been here before, watch one of my videos. Thanks for stopping by. If you're coming back, thanks again for watching. And please like and subscribe if you get some value out of this. And always please uh, comment and let me know if you'd like to see something in here in these updates or if you don't like something let me know as well so we're going to touch on home prices talk a little bit about interest rates what they've been doing and I'm going to show you some real world examples of what our lowest and middle and highest uh, houses look like what from last month what they sold and some pictures to show you uh, what those look like and then we're going to just talk about the market in general and some of the stats and then yeah so we're going to get into it let's start off with home prices okay starting off here on our home prices we're looking at a median sell price on a 12-week chart here we are down three percent year over year on home prices we're following 2023 really closely here just uh three percent below so down a little bit there. Um, so if you're selling, that's a little bit of a decrease in your home value. But if you're buying, home prices are a little bit cheaper th at this time of year than last year. So that's positive for you if you're home buying right now. So right here's our lowest sold last month. So this was 159,000, two bed, one bath, 1,620 square feet. It was built in 1949 and it was on 0.21 acres. This was either an extreme DIY if you were going to buy this or an investment special type of deal. So it's going to need a lot of work to get this up to what its full potential could have been uh, market value wise. So uh, moving on to our median sold price, 380,000, uh, five bed, three bath, 2,612 square feet. And it was built in 2007 and it was on 0.283 acres. A decent backyard here. Um, here's your bathroom, front picture, and some decent wood cabinets here. Uh, usually you see some, uh, some cheaper cabinets there. Let's look at the highest here. Uh, this one right here was just, uh, you know, not my style, but what a, what a house. 1.9 million, six bed, five bath uh, with a half bath. And it was 10,060 square feet, just crazy square footage on this place. And it was built in 2008 and it was on five acres. So uh, here's your front picture here, has a fountain in the front, a uh, big wraparound driveway, uh, double staircase here with this oval inset ceiling, uh, custom wood cabinets, big, big uh, overdone wood stuff. Um, if you like that, that's awesome. Uh, trade ceiling here, uh, soak and tub looking right out this window. And then here's this like courtyard in the back pretty crazy place. So we're moving on to our stat chart here, looking at uh, March compared to April. First thing you're going to notice is that April, uh, March, we had a big uptick in new listings and an even bigger uptick in listings this month in April. So uh, closings and uh, pendings are fairly similar, but that huge jump in the, the new listings there is pretty obvious. So we're going to check out the difference between these. All right, looking at our percentage difference here, our total active single family listings were at 234, which is 21% up from March. Our new listings are 16% up from March, and our closings are 3% up from March, as well as our pending. So there's your difference in percentages. Everything's up this month, which is not surprising. I think we're a little bit ahead of 2023 on the activity jumping up in the market. Uh, I don't know if that's people getting used to the interest rates being higher and they're just tired of waiting and they're just ready to go. Um, or if we're just early this year, it could be, could be for any number of reasons. Um, we're having a little bit of a nice early, earlier spring, so that could be it as well. So uh, as far as our months of inventory, we're looking at 2.1 based on our April numbers and 2.4 months of inventory based on our average over the last four months. So if you haven't heard me talk about it before, months of inventory is just a number we look at that if no houses came on the market, how long would it take for the current inventory to be bought up by the current rate of buying? So it would take 2.4 months if we look at our average over for all the market share to be bought up in that time frame, so it's just a little indication of how fast the market's moving we've been under three months of inventory which is extreme sellers market 
and it's acting more like a balanced market because of the higher interest rates. I've said that a million times before if you haven't watched my videos. So our new listings average price, we're looking at 506,000, which is up from 487. Our median sold price is sticking right around that 380 mark. Um, looking at how our competition is on some of the price segments, we're looking at 65 houses under 400K and only 29 under 300K. So you're gonna be competing for a lot more um, houses here. There's a lot more people looking in this range, more multiple offer situations under 300K. So, and our average days on market, we're down to 44 from 56. So days on market going down a little bit there. Our days on market per price, zero to 400,000, you're looking at 32 days on market, four to 600, 43, 600 to 800, you're looking at 71 days on market, and 800K plus, you're looking at 204 days on market. So those are the averages that closed this month for days on market. So if you're thinking about selling and you're, you know about what your house is priced at, this is about what you'd be looking at right now for days on market if you priced at or above market value. That finishes up the stat segment of this video. So yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about interest rates here. So they have been fluctuating again up over the 7% mark. I can't really quote rates, but if you're interested in talking with some of the lenders that I recommend that are local, please reach out. I'll send you that list so you can talk to them and find out about what interest rate you're looking at and the price range for homes that you're looking at. So that's the, always the best place to start is get pre-approved, talk with the lender, see exactly the numbers that you're looking at. That way you don't get excited for a house that is uh, more expensive than you're gonna be able to afford. So that's always a good start. Um, if you're thinking about buying or selling, please feel free to reach out at all times and uh, we'll go over a good strategy uh, there's definitely a lot of nuance depending on what price range you're in and if you're buying or selling. So there's a lot of differences there. So please reach out. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video as always, and we'll see you guys in the next one.